to Crown Heights Art Stroll. It's the first art stroll uh, in Crown Heights. Uh, we are at Calabar Imports, which will become Calabar Gallery. I'm Axel Magnetoton. I created the art stroll to bring traffic to the neighborhood. What are you going to see at the art stroll? You're going to see lots of art. You're going to see lots of people and you're going to actually enjoy this neighborhood. It's a fantastic neighborhood. Welcome again to Crown Heights Art Stroll. So what brought you here today? Well, I'm very, I'm from Prosper Lefferts Garden, which is a community right below Crown Heights. And I am very invested in the fact that these two communities are finally showcasing how many amazing artists, including myself, we have living here in these two vibrant communities. And um, I'm just really into preparing the communities and working in a partnership and doing whatever I can to encourage events like this, which is fantastic. I first learned about the art stroll was a couple months ago, the Harlem um, art, uh, art stroll. And then when she told us that they were doing it at Crown Heights, I'm like, Yay, I don't have to leave my neighborhood. So I've been super excited. I text, I email all my friends who live here about this, who I know and love art. And so I'm just like all in my arty, loving feelings right now. Okay, well, I heard about this from the Julia Seabrook Gallery on the Franklin Ave like Food Fest thing. I saw a poster out and they were like, oh, you got to come by. And I always love supporting arts in the neighborhood. So I'm excited to be here and uh, look at all, all the art in the neighborhood. This is Julie Super Gallery. This is our inaugural show, Mrs. Universe. Our next show is opening on April 20th, Chip Hagony Boy Meets World. I'm very happy you all came to the gallery for the Crown Heights Art Show, and hope to see you next time. The name of the gallery is My Gallery NYC. The reason for the name is because I want every person in the community, every artist, to say, my gallery, this is your gallery. You're in the community, it's your gallery. So come on in, experience it, pick the brain of all the artists, and maybe you are an artist also. So stop by, talk to me, and let's see if you could be in the next exhibit. Yeah, I think it's always important to really be able to connect at a deeper level, like in person with artists and just to see how you might connect with art in a different way. And even how that one artist we were talking to, I, it was, I can't remember his name. I wish I could give credit where credit is due, but he was talking about how like every time he sees someone interact with his art, he, he always asks like, oh, what are you experiencing? Like, what is your thoughts? Because everyone takes away something different because of their own perspective and, and amalgamation of different experiences. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing to experience art with different people. Hello, my name is Jean-Dominique Jean Bolsey. Okay. I am a visual artist. You consider an artist you know, as a medium, you know, you, through you, a lot of things you know, happening. But it doesn't mean that you'll be able to explain fully the meaning or you know, give the value of what you portray, you know, you have on the canvas. And it happens on, sometimes, you know, I even learn from people from my own painting. Tara and artists are reside in Crown Heights and I learned about the artist role on Instagram and what it means to me is just being able to view you know all the art from different artists um, in the neighborhood and learn about new galleries that I would have never learned about had it not been for the uh, I'm honored to have my work at Darla Ebanks's My Gallery NYC. I have four mixed media paintings in the show. They are collage pieces using antique fabric. My work touches on mostly forgotten women and voices that have been lost or erased over time. So sometimes I put the words of actual women who I, I, I read a lot of biographies of women. So I think forgotten history or marginalized history is really important to bring back to life. So I kind of try to do that through my paintings. Well, this is all by this fast book surrealism. Basically, the muse of the type of work that I do, and sometimes I'll make get ideas from 
Legends of Fairy Tales, like this piece here is from The Prince and the Pauper. To me, this piece is giving so, so much commentary on masculinity and deconstructing traditional masculinity, not only just by, you know, sort of, you know, the very obvious like floral embellishments on the attire, but also the color palette, you know, from the, from the, like the skin color. There's a lot of like reds, pinks going in there. Yeah, yeah. So I just, it's, it's definitely giving a very soft rendition of a prince. I have my own story for the work, but then when it's done, then it's open for interpretation for anybody else to pick up what they can, what they can do. I love creating three-dimensional pieces in art and clay. It's something that connects to my spirit. I, it's like playing in the earth. I love gardening as much as I love sculpting because I'm touching and connecting to the earth. It gives me energy, it makes me vibrant, but I haven't always done it. There were periods in my life when I had to take a break from doing it. I graduated from Pratt Institute as a um, fine artist and then as an art therapist but life happened. I just got busy raising my children and got occupied and took a break. And one day I decided it's time to start back. Quite recently, I'm talking about like a 30 year break. And I decided to start back. I found a studio and began working again. So these are some of the pieces of my recent reconnection to myself, to that part of myself that is so important that we should never forget. I don't regret having stopped, but I looked at the fact that maybe if I had different resources and other opportunities available to me in terms of managing my time better, I probably would have continually created. But I'm so happy to be back that it doesn't even matter anymore. I'm creating with um, clay. The clay sculpture has to be fired. Sometimes, as I've just started back, I've made beautiful pieces and they've exploded in the kiln because maybe I forgot a technique that I shouldn't, you know, I don't, didn't remember. So it was really like a learning tool for me to remember the technical part of the process. The creative part came naturally, but how to fire them, how long you have to wait for them to be dry. It's not a mold that self dries. You have to work in clay, you have to mold it, you have to let it slowly dry, then you have to fire it, then you have to put an oxide on it. In the case of this mask called human, I used two or three different clay bodies to create the piece, which is why we have this marbleized effect. I combined them for that. In the case of the one at the top that says speak, it speaks of those of us who internalize information inside of ourselves, but we have the right to speak. We have the right to use our voice. And this piece was made with a white clay body and, and, and covered with what's called an iron oxide. So it's not paint, it's an actual body of oxide in powder form that we mix and we put an overlay. And I was really very pleased with the way it just fell in the corners on its own. See, that's the beauty of this work. You never can anticipate exactly how it will turn out. It's part of the creative process. I might not like it so much, someone might love it. I might love it, someone might adore it. I might say, well, this feels good, and someone says it speaks of my spirit. A lot of people have told me enough feedback is that my work reminds them of ancestral art. It reminds them of them going back within themselves. Uh, of a memory of peace or protection. Those are the kinds of comments I've had from the work. So it gives me joy that people get something more than what I thought. They could feel my energy through the piece. This is also made from one solid piece of clay and we molded the forms into it. As, as I touch the clay, I feel an energy come through my hands. That's the only way I can explain it to anyone. I didn't pre-draw it or pre-design it. The spirit works with me with the energy in the clay and so out came this figure. And I'm as fascinated as others because I'm just working. The energy allows me to create and I'm sure a lot of artists have the same position when they work. But this piece I named it the elder. It could either be a woman or a man but in my head it was a female elder. Bearing chains around the neck, sitting in position, watching over the village, taking care of the families without saying much, just being there as an elder person with the wisdom that came with that. So that's what I got out of this baby. And if you can look, there are movements around her. This is Fatmo's gallery. We have 
the work of Mildred Belcher in this space and Elisa Darujo. Elisa's work is from the 1990s and early 2000s. She has, I think, six sculptural works in here, one on the wall, the rest on the floor. And Elisa's work are mixed media. Um, they're mainly made out of clay or cloth and wire. Um, so that's, you know, how she can form all these kind of organic forms. She makes the form using wire and then wraps cloth around them. And since 2010, she has been working in ceramics, but for this show presents her sculpture works from the 90s and early 2000s. So, there's a Lisa. There's a Lisa. And we'll just start, we'll just start here. Thank you, <laughs> so about Elisa Darigo's work, you can really see in her sculpture the hand at work. The stitching in this piece against the wall, she must have spent hours, but you can see the hand going in and out, and it's almost a meditation. And the same goes for the piece in the front, which is kind of almost like a basket, but it's endlessly strips of fabric woven back and forth, and then she stiffens it and it becomes that beautiful sculpture. And it's something that talks to me a lot, the hint in the work, and she really has it. And Mildred Belcher's work here, we have textile pieces and prints um, made using walnut ink, which is very cool. My work in the show represents three bodies of work. The first, which is the most ongoing, is called Skin in the Game, and it features figurative works rendered on paper that's been covered with walnut ink. And generally, the, the series is about risk and putting one's own self at risk for what one believes in. The images of the figures are not immediately discernible, and the viewer needs to adjust their own relationship to the piece in order to fully take in the work. The second series is a recent series called What is to be Built and consists of white line woodcuts, which are all hand printed from one block with watercolors and deal with the idea of creating possibilities within limitations. The third series in the show is a series of portals and portal is sort of a working title for that group it's a new series for me that is also exploratory in a similar way that the what is to be built series is exploratory and it consists of a series of ovals created by pushing wool through fabric the pieces begin with a drawing and then i uh, elaborate the drawing through using the fabric and the wool in the way that they're hung now in the gallery hanging in space i feel that they really allow the viewer to gaze into the pieces and perhaps imagine a space beyond i'm meredith mcneil i'm the artist showing right now at five miles in an exhibition called inside outside conceived of as a, an installation for the space. The work on view explores the idea of having a loved one incarcerated, so being on either inside or outside of the prison system. So the work that I've been doing for the last 10 years has windowphilia images that have very reflective surfaces are exploring that notion. However, when I was asked to do this installation at five miles, I came to the space, the plus space, which is the side gallery. It has a pull-down grate, as we New Yorkers are quite familiar with. The, the gate is down, but the space is lit and available to the public 24 hours a day. That means that someone walking by can see this exhibition, but they're always going to see it through a great through bars. Hi, my name is Gabe Boyers. I'm the owner and director of Be Dry Goods here in Crown Heights. The name of this gallery dates back to my great grandfather who went by the name of B and he immigrated from Ukraine in 1920 and opened a dry goods shop nearby on the corner of uh, St. John's and Troy. Even though he didn't sell art, I've taken the name of that shop 
at which he worked until he died in 1969. My grandfather worked there, my father worked there until he went to college. So in some sense, it's a sort of fourth generation Crown Heights business. The show that we have up right now is called Fully Furnished and features works of uh, New York-based painter Jeannie Weissglass. And this body of work, as you can see, has lots of floating furniture elements, chairs, tables, things like that. And we've paired those with actual pieces of furniture that have sort of either interesting stories or are especially interesting design pieces uh, themselves and are sort of enjoying all of the uh, conversation between these two different kinds of work. A couple of things that I can show you right now that we have here. This is the actual chair used in the film Casablanca that was in uh, the famous Rick's Cafe. And you can see in this photo, some of these chairs can be seen, and this is one of the actual ones used in the movie. And this is the kind of fun thing that we enjoy putting in the show. I thought it would be neat to pair with this drawing by Jeannie called Divine Recline. And this sort of reminded me a little bit of bamboo. <laughs> um, and then sort of amazing, there are these neat little correspondences that come out when you put shows together like this. You can see in the picture from the movie, there's this incredible shadow of these leaves here, and it looks exactly like these leaves right next to it. So there are a lot of fun little things to explore in this show. I hope you'll come and visit. Thanks. Hi, I'm Sarah May, and I run the Shirley Project Space. Rachel Wren's show, Sightlines, speaks of landscape, but it also speaks of memory. It's not a depiction of a landscape as we see it. It's more a depiction of a landscape as we experience it or feel it. It's a sensory experience and it's an experience of how we remember the places that we've been. Most of the shows at the Shirley Project Space have some form of installation or site-specific piece of art. And for Rachel, that was this piece called Limelight. And it was really a nice companion piece to the rest of the paintings in the show, because although it doesn't look exactly like the paintings, there are these corresponding themes and elements that are in the work that show up in the installation. Welcome to the place. Are you, uh, have you been on the stroll tonight? Yeah. yeah. I think this might be our last yeah, best Yeah, I think stop. it is. Like, definitely all last yeah. Best yeah. Well, this is painter Rachel Wren, and she is an abstract painter. Everyone, I usually challenge them to make an installation as well. So if you come with me, I'm going to show you the installation she's made. So the installation relates to her artwork, but it also relates to the architecture of this way. Oh, oh, wow, that was it. <laughs> oh, I was like the reaction. I mean, like, I'm like running into my hair. It's just like... Actually, your, your hair looks really good with this green. Yeah, it does. It's it just actually, like, it, it moves. It's some sort of a rainbow of green. And it moves from this milky yellow. Yeah, it to you to you See? You are coordinating. Oh, it's really it's coordinating. Coordinating. Perfect. I recommend moving up and down yeah. on your love because there's a feeling, I think, of going underwater oh, and coming up again. And depending on your eye line, you'll have a different experience. So my, my eye line is where the color shifts into this warm um, green, but right below it starts becoming cooler. So I like that I um, you know, feel all this golden view when I'm looking straight on, but then when I go down, I really do feel like I'm Maybe enter in the water. Yeah. Guys, the whole experience is just amazing. It just felt like a magic school bus, like art, film trip, I don't know, whatever it was. But I had so much fun just being able to go to so many different spots. Like right now, this is our last stop, but we're here at the Shirley Project Space. That was amazing. Always connect with real artists. Well, I'm just excited about this journey that we took and to discover more about all the spaces that are in the neighborhood from my new friends. And I think I agree. I think it's always important to really be able to connect at a deeper level, like in person with artists and just to see how you might connect with art in a different way. So there needs to be more art walks like this. So yeah, yeah, whoever, wherever the funders are, let's have more. I'm excited about the stroll because although this gallery been here for two years, 
there's a lot of my neighbors that are not aware. So I'm excited that they could see that there's galleries in our neighborhood. We could enjoy an opening reception in a gallery in our own neighborhood. We don't need to go anyplace else anymore. They're here. Yeah.